Good morning, everyone. Um, I have a new camera set up today that I'm trialing. Um, just a bit better quality and things like that. So, um, and you can also, you know, do silly things like this. I'm actually impressed with these filters. So just hold on a minute. So it's pretty crazy, isn't it? Pretty crazy filters. Um, where are we? I can be bald. <laughs> it's terrible. I like this one. This this appeals to the geek in me. The VHS. If you grew up in the um, 80s, 90s and you had a VHS, a tape player, I like it. All right. Enough fun with filters. Um, obviously, we don't, you know, we don't really support them because of, you know, they're inherently kind of evil, to be honest. All right. um, I wrote this out, what I'm about to read. So today's kind of learning and uh, I'm just going to go for it. Um, this might be a long video. I'm not sure how long this will take to get through, um, but I, I hope that this blesses you today and... Um, if I have to pause to cough, it's just because I'm still a little bit unwell, but I'm fine. And I appreciate all your prayers. And I appreciate all your likes. And I uh, wanted to welcome all the new members to the channel as well, the new subscribers. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. And it's um, it's wonderful just to, you know, see some new faces and, and just for you to participate in the conversation as well. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to read this out. Um, I tend to articulate better with words than I do just just freestyling. Um, I'm not that sort of person. I'm, I like to form my thoughts. So I like to write things out. Um, if it does sound a bit reedy reedy, um, that's just because I'm reading it. Um, but I'm, I'm being open about that. So here we go. So God gave me a dream the other night, which I can't share the full dream. But I'll say this that he showed me criticism is likened to a bullet. We try to find a way to stop the bullet from hitting us. Yet in doing so, we take our eyes off what is most important. I won't say any more on that. He also gave me multiple videos, one talking about Joseph and his brothers and another talking about how it angers him, how his body treats each other. So let's be honest, like all the bickering, debate and arguments, if that happened in man's army or the military, You'd be punished severely and be doing remedial training until the sun came up. It's like a torturous PT, push-ups, any sort of punishment that they can yield as a group. Um, that's what they would do in the, in the military, okay? Because you can't, you, you have to work as one, right? So why should it stand in God's army? It won't. He simply will not allow it. If we bicker and fight and argue... I'm not talking about loving rebuke or correction, which is important. Then we simply will not be part of his army, for we will have proven we cannot work together as one body. So I encourage you, let us come together, be as one, help each other. If you see someone down, pick them up with your love and kindness. If you see your brother and sister is out of ammo, hand them a word that is as sharp as a two-edged sword to fill their ammo pouches. Tie another's bootlace like Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Be kind, love each other as commanded. Before I move on, I also received this scripture, which was a real revelation to me. Jeremiah 12. Let me just flick over. Um, verse 5. Okay, here we go. If thou hast run with the footman and they have wearied thee, then how can how canest thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusteth, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Okay, and just to tie this back to the dream that he gave me, um, talking about the bullet, there was a river in that dream. Okay, so... This is how he works. Um, it's, it's incredible. You know, we have to piece this together, but it's just, it's just amazing, like, how he talks to us. This was encouragement, as in another word he gave me. He told me to harden my chin 
and I didn't know what it meant at the time. But as you see, all these small pieces come together to form a greater lesson or learning. Another good one was when the enemy tried to give me a false word a few days ago. I used God's word to measure this in order to test the spirits. And when I asked for the scripture multiple times, none appropriate could be given. Yesterday, I was then given Jeremiah 28 verse 5 to 11, the true test of prophecy, where we learn what happens to the prophet Hananiah. So let's go to Jeremiah 28. Just bear with me. Got a lot open. Okay, verse 15. Here we go. Um, all right, so I won't go into it, um, but I'll just read 15 to 17, not the full thing. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now. Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Okay, so Hananiah went and told the people, okay, what is a lie before the Lord, okay, because it's false, false prophecy. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Okay, so that just shows um, how important it is. Okay, it's so important um, that we have to be careful. Okay, so we see, and I've wrote here, we see we need to be careful, very careful. God will speak to us, but we must ensure it is God speaking to us that we are walking in the Spirit so He can speak to us. We will talk a little bit about that today in this video. I wrote this today as I rejoice in some small revelation He has been revealing to me in the Spirit. I didn't honestly even know He was doing it until it all started to come together. So praise God for teaching us these extremely important lessons. Okay, and this is what I wrote. <clears throat> God is amazing, truly incredible. There are not words to really articulate just how he teaches, how, how he educates us. The thing is, we can always count on a new lesson from him. Sometimes it can be a tough lesson. Sometimes it can be a gentle, gentle one and delivered with care. One thing is for certain, Abba, as I prefer, prefer to call him, is blunt and likes to get straight to the point. <laughs> Absolutely. You see, his love for us is so strong that our comfort is not his priority. If we have faith and believe wholeheartedly in Him, we allow His love and protection to shroud us. He wants us to rely on Him. If we do this very act, then His Holy Spirit can sanctify us, reshape us, remodel us. Like a broken down truck that had dents, scrapes and oil leaking everywhere, the Holy Spirit is the mechanic, the panel beater, the spray painter, the upholsterer. He turns that raggedy old truck into a vehicle ready to transport our spirit and soul into the destination that we must head to. That raggedy truck, now a shiny new truck, full of fuel and quality oil, can bring us home. Home where we belong, to the place that we desire to be, to the place where we can park the truck, hop out and be who we were destined to be. This is our life, truly living, the destination. This world in which we currently reside is a trial by fire, a test to see what decision we will ultimately rest on. Nothing else matters. Understand this, nothing else matters. Your house, your car, your possessions, your career, it is all meaningless. It serves the God of this world with a small g, Satan. That is all. While this is Satan's world, remember God is always in control has overarching control and that will never change, never change. He holds you in his hand if you simply have faith. Once we have accepted his gift of salvation, his word asks us to walk in the spirit and to crucify the flesh and to do good works. We see this in Galatians 5 verse 16 to 26. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the fl flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lat... I can't even say the word. I can't even say it. <laughs> Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sed seditions, heresies, envyings, murders. I think it's lavishness or something, yeah, how you say it. Um, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, they that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, walking in the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperament, temperance. Against there is such there is no law, okay? So while we're walking in the flesh, these, the law applies to us, okay? While we're walking in the Spirit, the fruit, we generate the fruits of the Spirit. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections, crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. All right. So you see that it's likened to a switch. Let me just flick back to the camera. Okay. It's kind of like a, it's like a weird appearance. Oh, I didn't do it then. Okay. Um, you see that it is likened to a switch that we can operate in two different modes. The closer we draw to our Abba Father and the deeper our faith becomes, the more frequently we'll find ourselves walking in the Spirit. Thus, we can then discern His will for us in the moment and open the door to obedience. It is there where we can find His peace and rest in Him. We're operating in the flesh, where while operating in the flesh, we will never be at peace. For the worries of this world will continue to overcome us. The bullets fired by others in criticism um, that are being used unknowingly by Satan and his, min and his minions will impact us and affect us if we're walking in the flesh. In the spirit, our wep weapons are not carnal. Therefore, our true strength, nature and protection from God can defeat any such attacks or threats. We must rely on him and put on the full armor of God. Okay, we put on the full armor of God to protect us while we're walking in the spirit. Okay, that's what, what it's for. Job 11, verse 13 to 20 says, just bear with me. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thy hand towards him, if iniquity be in thy hand, put it far away and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. Okay, in your temple, who you are. For then shall thou lift up thy face without spot. Okay, then you will lift up your face without spot or blemish. Okay, you won't, if you, if you put wickedness away from you and you, okay, and if you stretch out your hand towards him, if you, if you reach out for God, okay, if you do that and don't let evil dwell within you, okay, then he will lift you up without spot or blemish, okay? And you'll be steadfast and shall not fear. Because thou shalt forget thy misery, you'll forget all this horrible stuff. And remember it as waters, waters that pass away. It'll be like a distant memory. And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning, Okay? Age shall be clearer than the noonday, okay? It sounds an awful lot. You could, this is a multi-layered, but it's also like, you know, in heaven, um, we de-age, you know, we're, we're young again. Um, but that's how we'll, we'll be in our spirit as well. And our light will shine forth as in the morning. And thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Ye, there shall dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety or because you stretched out your hand towards God you're in safety now okay all these wonderful things and thou shall lie down and thou shall make thee afraid okay the lion shall lie down with the lamb okay ye many shall make suit unto thee but the eyes of the wicked shall fail okay 
So you'll have rest. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, okay? I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's just hit me now, okay? Psalm 23. My favorite psalm. My favorite part of the Bible. Okay, because it means so much to me. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail and they shall not escape. Trying to um, retain my emotions here. And their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost, which is a term for dying. Okay, they shall not escape and they shall die. The wicked shall fail. All right. While we are walking in the spirit, drawing closer to God, let us rejoice as his word says. But this is a test of our faith. All trials that come our way are to test us, to tighten up our cinches, to put on our armor, to draw our sword of the Spirit and allow us to defiantly stand against the walls of the enemy. Remember, all of these trials ready us to be more Christ-like, to be, more, to be like the warrior in him, to be like the kind, loving, gentle lamb in him, to be like that fierce, triumphant, bold, mighty warrior, soldier, king, to be like the high priest that is the source of truth, righteousness, faith, love, peace and war. You are being ready for battle. The future will be such. He requires his soldiers refined and a reflection of him. His army will endure anything. So rest in this. Rejoice and be humbled. For if this message is hitting home with you, then you have been chosen for a time such as this. You are born for this. He will not let you fall. He will hold you through the storm. James 1 says, But let him ask in faith, nothing, oh, sorry, uh, start again. My brethren, count it all, this is starting from verse 2, by the way. Um, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work patient, worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, remember? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea dri driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but in the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. The sun is no sooner rising, with, risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flowers thereof fall off, falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So shall the rich man fade in all his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to, him, to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Sorry, let me just move this down a little. Uh, where was I up to? For let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay, let's not forget lust is not just lust as in sexual lust. Lust can be things of the world. Okay, they can be, um, you know, just pastimes, things that we like to do. They can be things that we, you know, can be food. It can be exercise. It can be um, wanting to reform relationships that God's, you know, cut, cut you off from. So don't just, when you see lust, just don't think of lust as sexual lust, okay? We all suffer from different forms of lust in some ways. Um, we have to flee from lust, okay? That's what God's word, God's word tells us to do, is to flee, to run away from lust, okay? And I remember um, when it talks about sexual lust, it talks about, you know, the woman and staying, the strange woman and staying away from a house, you know? Don't go near a front door, like stay away or flee, okay? Um, all the, the lusts of, of the world, I mean, that's what the devil does, right? Like he cre he's created this world that is just full of lusts and things to keep us, you know, keep us comfortable and keep us, you know, wanting more. So think about that. 
Then when lust hath, hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my bro beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable, variableness, neither shadow of turning. He doesn't change. He's always the same. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of any man worketh not the righteousness of God. God is the one, is the judge. God's the one who will deliver the wrath, not us. If someone tears you to shreds, it's not up to you. It's not up to you, up to, you to, to judge them. It's not up to you to, to get revenge. You shouldn't. Okay, God's the judge. He'll judge them. Forgive them and move on. Uh, where are we up to? Verse 19. So we're, we're still in, um, in James chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore my... Uh, sorry. Um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll read this again. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and super, superfluidity, superfluity of naughtiness, uh, like superfluousness, I think, of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted world which is able to save your souls. The engrafted word, sorry. Um, but be doers, but ye be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Okay, we have to live by the word. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. All right, so charity and, and good works and helping others and loving others is true religion, okay? Anything else is the work of man. All right, I'd like to end this today with Psalm 141, a prayer of David to strengthen us against the devices of the enemy. All right, let me just bring that up. A Psalm of David. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When the judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst that I withal escape. All right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Praise God for another wonderful day to be alive, to be with our families, to show love, to learn, okay, to read his word, um, to be a doer of his word, and to understand, um, you know, to, to have revelation and to be fortunate enough to be living in these times that we're in. This is a time where 
All this revelation is being revealed. And all those that came before us warned us of this time. And they warned us of such a time through his word and their own revelation. And so, you know, we're fortunate to be living in these times. So rejoice. Okay, don't be sad. Don't be frightened. Rejoice for the times that we live in. Um, for they will soon be, you know, as he said, like waters, like a distant memory. It will all be a distant memory. Okay, and all these things that we worry about now, we won't be worrying about. So it does not mean we don't have to endure the things that we're about to see. Um, but it does mean that there will come a time where you'll be at perfect peace. So let it be a lesson today when we find ourselves having bullets fired at us um, to remind ourselves to continue to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh because while we're in the spirit, nothing can hurt us. All right, God bless and Maranatha. Love you guys.